Hey guys, Sam the Raid Man back here today with another video. Pretty excited. Today we're going to be doing a showcase of Stoutus Dragonbane, Force Affinity, Defense Based Nuker. Really cool champion. I've got him equipped in Savage. I'll go over his build in a little bit. But really exciting champion. I pulled him a while ago and he's just announced to be a guaranteed based off of 150 Ancients this coming weekend. In terms of Masteries or Blessings, uh, for Blessings I think Polymorph would be good. Brimstone is obviously solid for PvE. Polymorph would be good for a Go Second Arena team. And then obviously Soul Reap would be a good uh, mastery if you're building him as an arena nuker. But the stats that you get, substats you get for Polymorph or Brimstone would be better than Soul Reap because Soul Reap is attack. But it does come with crit damage at higher levels and a little HP as well. The Polymorph would be really good for a go second arena team because if he gets attacked, he's got a chance of placing his opponents into a sheep or turning his opponents into a sheep, which would... Elongate the battle, let him get his abilities off, and slowly wear down the other team, or try and just set up his defense-based nuke. Sadly, I don't have any books. The books don't really help a ton with his damage, but they do really help decreasing his cooldowns, which if you're using him for PvE content will be really helpful. A1, attacks two times, decreases turn meter if the targets are under any debuffs. So not, not bad, solid A1, again based on defense. A2 attacks all enemies two times. Each hit has a 50% chance of placing a stun. That books up to 65% chance, so it's a little bit better than the Sill stun. A3 has got the cool dragon animation, places increased defense. If they have higher attack than defense, the enemies you're attacking places decreased crit damage. And if they have higher defense than attack, you place decreased speed. So kind of kind of cool ability. And then this is his passive, which I think is the best part. Whenever anyone places weakened, decreased defense, or poison, it reflects them back on the attacker, and that has no cooldown. And then one of the reasons he's a good nuker is because he does increased damage by 5% for every debuff. So I started with his masteries, but I don't have the gems to finish them or the time. And I really wanted to get this video out today. We have him built in Savage Gear. And we're going to go ahead and do a damage test with him here in Dragon. So the goal of this is to get him increased defense with Siffy. And then we're going to try and put as many debuffs out on the opponents as we can. So Cavalax puts four poisons at the start. Lydia put increased defense... Uh, decrease defense and weaken and then uh bivald is going to put provoke and leech out there calyx puts a few more out there so we're going to go ahead with let's go with the a2 i believe here so 65 to 76 to around 50 so about 120,000, really depending across the board so pretty strong really nothing insane i mean again defense based nukers don't hit quite as hard as attack based nukers but it still is really strong so let's go back and we're going to test the A3 this time, which is the, got the cool dragon animation, which you guys will see in a second. Looking for no resist here. Looks good. Okay, so you've got around 6 to 7 debuffs on everybody, maybe 8. So we're going to go in with the dragon heart here. Super cool animation. Almost one shots everyone around 110, 112. So I think I'm gonna, what I'm going to end up doing is... Just letting this Dragon 20 run run out. Dragon 20, he is uh, strong affinity. Everyone is magic, and he is force. So I'm just going to let this run out. We're going to try and test the A1 damage. He actually has the A2 available, so we're going to run that again. Not near as strong, but again, we don't have decreased defense and weaken out. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this on auto. We'll come back at the end of the fight and see how much damage he's done.
All right, guys, so we are back here with the final damage. As you can see, Cavalax is completely carrying the team with the 1.1 million damage. Let's go ahead and shift over to a arena battle now. Some of these are going to be too easy. I mean, I'm in low gold five, so it's not insane teams that we're fighting against, but really we're just looking to see how hard he smacks. This is my previous arena team I've been running for the tournament that I built in the last Rotos video. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. But we'll probably keep the Kaimar lead. Obviously, we're going to put Stoutus in. We want to put debuffs up. So someone like Cavalax is an option, um, but he doesn't d ignore 100% defense. So I think somebody with drop defense and weekend like Lydia is really going to boost his damage. So we're actually not fast enough. Looks like they are speed tuned. We might just die here. Okay, Stout does defense base, ticks it out. So does Lydia. We might have a chance. Oh, if Lydia can put decreased defense and weaken, I think we've got a shot here. Let's go in with the A2 or the A3. A3. One shots the whole team. Look at that. That's exactly what Stoutus is good at, is just sticking it out and then blowing the enemy team up. So I'm worried that either Kaimar or Hefrak is going to be stone skin here. And if they're stone skin, we're not going to be able to drop their defense, but we'll try. See if maybe Kaimar can remove it. He doesn't have super high accuracy, and stone skin's got obviously got a 50% chance of removal. Increased defense with Siffy. Going to go put everyone to sleep. Did not remove so stone skin. Going to wake him back up. Lydia's actually going to remove all of our buffs. Kaimar's going to bomb us. But again, he tanks it out. Blows up everyone else pretty easily. Stoutus is down. That Hefrak isn't built super well. It's hard to build someone with insane damage. Stay alive. All right, Stoutus, stay alive. It's hard to build someone with, with heavy damage and in stone skin unless you have really, really in-game gear. Doesn't quite drop him, um, but if he finishes the job. So pretty strong. You can see his damage there. Trying to find other teams for him. He does have a double hitter on his A2, so he could go into a Rotus team, but I think we're just going to lose the speed battle, and then Rotus going to start popping people off. Let's try this one, see if we can go first. I didn't build out a go second team for him, but I think that really is his best spot. Put everyone to sleep. All right, Arbor's not going to speed boost, so I'm risking waking him up. Let's go with the A2. One shots them all. That is awesome. Trying to look for other teams here. It's kind of difficult to pick. Just going to fly through this Yannicka team really quickly. Still farming medals, you know, got to get that great haul. Completely maxed out. All right, let's go into this team again. They might go first, but we're, we're semi-fast. My Arbiter is obviously faster than my Siffy, but we, my Siffy is faster than this Arbiter. I don't want to risk waking them up, and then if they're being speed-tuned, them just going and putting block damage on. So what is block her skills? So we have very few debuffs here. Actually lands two of the stuns and hits pretty hard, um, finishes off the Arbiter. So I think what I want to try and do as well, this is, I mean, he's obviously amazing in the arena, but I want to try him in some PvE content. And I think for that, since he doesn't like nuke like a seer, I think we should probably put some accuracy on him to get some use out of that stun and maybe the Terminator drop on the A1. Let's go to this team again. We're just slightly faster. A Madam Saris would also be better than Lydia in this instance because um, rips off buffs and then doesn't wake them up from Kamar. I want, to, I want to slow down and show you this animation from a different angle with the dragon. It really is one of the coolest animations in the game. The dragon just comes in there charging, kills almost all of them, and then Lydia's going to block revive, and that's going to make that really easy. Lydia, man, one of my favorite champions. I know everyone's, you know, she's not new to the game at this point, but she is just amazing. I use her everywhere. All right, so I think that's going to be it for the arena now. We're going to go ahead and transition. I'm going to go ahead and adjust his build, take off this defense banner. Right now he's about 4,500 defense or so. So we're going to lose, yeah, 583 defense, which hurts a lot, but he's still strong. Um, we'll give him a little more defense, a little speed here with some glyphs. But this will put him around 220 or 230 accuracy. What's he at? 232 accuracy. Should be enough to land some stuff. Really just looking for that stun. So we're going to put him here. He's still going to be a good damage dealer. Let's just do a random Doom Tower floor, something semi-high. Let's do 101. This is my Seer team that I've been using pretty grossly pay to win, so don't look at that. But we'll keep Lydia. We'll do Bivald for control and debuffs, because, again, the, he does more damage based on the debuffs that are on the opponents. And then we'll do Kaimar just to reset, and he'll put a few debuffs out there too. Got a Poison on the A1 and a Sleep on the A2. No Poisons there. That's fine. 
really just, yeah, we don't want Lydia to get resisted. And Bivol's awesome because he can land those provokes on weak hits as well. So we're going with the A2 here. Didn't actually get, we got one stun there. Again, Norag can't be stunned, so it's just the Yagas that can be. And he's not booked, so each hit has a 50% chance. So it's, you know, a coin flip every single time that he uses that ability, and it looks like he missed it on the, the middle Laga, Yaga and the right Yaga. So again, he's really tanky, you know, see if he's going to heal him a little bit every turn. We've got Leech on all the enemies, so when he hits, he's going to heal. Let's go in with the A2 again. Oh, blew him up, absolutely. So we're going to A1, get to the next wave. Um, I'm actually going to end up putting this on auto, maybe I'll speed it up a little bit, and then we'll come back and show you the damage at the end of it. Last one, finishing up here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the damage. Stoutus, again, carrying with the damage, almost double what Bivol does with his multiple AoEs. So, again, really strong at this. You know, it's obviously helping with stunning and decreasing some turn meter, not to mention just constant AoE since he has the two AoEs on his kit. Does some really good damage. I mean, 411 is not a fast time, but at the same time, it's, I mean, it's Doom Tower 101. Like, it's not like a an easy fight that you're facing. These are hard-level characters with, um, with high stats. So... That's going to be the video, guys. Stoutus, I think, really is awesome here. And I think that if you guys have the 150 agents saved up or you don't mind spending a little more to get to those 150, I think he's an awesome champion. I think once he's booked out, he's even better. I think he's got some really cool use cases in the arena. I think he's pretty solid for PvE. He's going to be great for Faction Wars. If you haven't completed that, gosh, he's going to be one of the best champions in the Bandalord faction. 
So that's going to be the video for today, guys. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you all.